All right, just going to do a video pointing out the fact that Brian Dillinger's followers, his wicked idolaters, don't like having their sin kicked. They don't like having their sin and idolatry kicked and rebuked and reproved. Hence why they're just they're just wreathing over this whole Christmas debate and essentially calling people lost who disagree with Brian Dillinger over the Christmas debate. And people that have numerous brethren that have tried to rebuke Brian Dillinger, many of whom are actually older than Brian Dillinger, because he likes to go off about how, oh, if you're younger than me, you know, be quiet, you know, I'm an elder, respect me. Well, brethren that are his age or older, I've tried to correct him on this. He will not take any correction. Why? Because Brian is prideful. Let me just quickly show you what, what the Bible says about, a key verse on what the Bible says about this thing of pride and how Brian Dillinger is in fact a very, very prideful, uh, arrogant person. First of all, let's go to Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13. Let's turn there. In your King James Bible, which is the Word of God in English, something that Brian Dillinger's idolaters don't seem to really follow that much because they hold on to their heathen traditions or Catholic Jesuit traditions of men, like Christmas. Proverbs 8, 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Okay, um, pride is something that God hates. Okay, pride is what got Satan kicked out of heaven. His, it has he got his, basically his role, like his role in heaven. He got kicked out of his role in heaven. Basically, I'll put it that way, uh, because he is prideful. The five prides of Satan in Isaiah chapter fourteen verses nine through uh, for Isaiah chapter fourteen verses twelve to fifteen. I do apologize. I was thinking of another verse, but here's another interesting scripture that kind of tie into this. Make sure I'm full screen. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 to 19. This describes Brian Dillinger to a T. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look. Again, we've seen that with Brian quite a lot. A lying tongue. He has no shame in just falsely accusing people, and his wicked followers like JT does and some of these other guys have no shame in just lying about people and just falsely accusing people and willfully telling lies. I mean, there, are, there have been many, many instances where Brian knows the truth of a situation, like the instance with Tim Conan, like the instance with Philip Newton. He knows the truth, but then tells lies anyway. Okay, a lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked imaginations. You'll see that with uh, guys like JT. Do I think he's a saved man? I honestly don't know. Okay, I'm not like him. I don't just go around calling people lost who don't, who don't agree with me or who attack me. Okay, I want to believe he's saved. I honestly don't know. The way he's acting is that of a lost man. Again, I'm not saying he's lost. I'm saying he's acting like the lost world in how he's behaving. Feet that are swift to running into mischief. Again, you got Brian Dillinger who is constantly making up stories and, and twisting people's words to basically control the narrative. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Again, that covers Brian Dillinger and JT. A false witness that speaketh lies. JT just lies and lies and lies and lies about people who go against his god, his, his idol, Brian Dillinger. And he that soweth discord among brethren. Brian's ministry has produced these people like Uriah 1611 and his, this YouTube channel called Abraham, or this other guy, uh, Omar Gonzalez, or whatever his name is, come out of Brian's ministry, and they just sow discord. They troll the comments who basically they troll the comments and attack and call people lost who simply just try to correct Brian Dillinger because they don't like having their God kicked. But going to show the comments of JT's video on Philip Newton attacking him. Now, again, you know, obviously I, you know, would have some issues with Philip Newton. I may have some disagreements with him. I don't know enough about him to say for certain. So I'm not coming out as an, as an endorsement of Philip Newton because I just don't know not, enough about his stances to really say yes or no. Or to say I don't agree with him or, or whatever. We're going to show the comments on uh, JT's video where he is basically going off on Philip Newton for essentially correcting his god, Brian Dillinger. Let me just make sure I'm full screen again. Let me just also zoom in on this as well. So some of these comments just show how these guys do not like having their sin kicked. Because the whole thing started over the whole Christmas debate. And whether Christmas is a liberty or not. Okay. Here's one such comment. This guy called Anthony Tum Leo, whatever. Wow, great work exposing these guys, Brother Jacob. A very scriptural rebuke. These guys really do have some serious issues. The first thing you show from the scriptures is on Purim, which absolutely destroys Philip's heretical teaching. Just unreal what he is teaching, and he never stops whining about the Christmas issue. Okay, first of all, I need to point something out. Using the whole thing of, of Purim, which is a scriptural God-ordained holiday, to defend Christmas, which is an unscriptural pagan Catholic holiday, which has nothing to do, it's not commanded anymore in scripture, is a very weak argument. But again, oh, he won't stop whining about the Christmas issue. Why? Because you don't like having your heathen customs kicked. You don't like having your sins kicked. That's the real issue there. 
Then you've got this other Wicked Devil here, Uriah G19, or, or other, some other guys too. It's just like a group of these little weird YouTube channels who just, who were created recently and they just trolled the, the comments of anybody who speaks against Grime. Phil, he simply says Uriah G19, or he used to be called Uriah 1611. Philip Newton removed the video where he specifically said he still struggles with Hollywood movies and video games. I called him out on it and told him how ironic it is of him to call us heretics about Christmas while he can't, st while he still can't have victory on movies and video games. He is saying this while he calls himself a bishop. He then makes a video called Walk and Talk and mentions me that I lied about him about the video games and movies. Yeah, because you do. You lie. You lie all the time about people. You tell lies and then you just pridefully won't admit to it. And... You know, whether he's still struggling with it, I don't know. He's admitting to it, at least. You see, Brian Dellinger never admits to any of his faults. I've never seen him once, or, or I'll say, I'll take that back. Very seldomly have I ever seen Brian Dellinger ever admit to his own wickedness. You see, this is the thing about this cult. They love to point out everybody else's wickedness. They love to just go at you for your wickedness all day long. But then what about when it comes to their wickedness? Whenever it comes to their wickedness, and you point, their, you point out their wickedness and their sin, they don't quite like that. See, they love pointing out your sin and your wickedness you struggle with, but whenever you point out their sins they struggle with, and whenever you point out wickedness they're involved in, and, and they don't want to give up, they don't like that. Hence why I'm doing this video, pointing out their wickedness. And I understand they're not going to like this, which honestly, I honestly couldn't care less. Because if your whole ground for calling me lost is because I spoke against your god, Brian Dillinger, it just shows you're a respecter of persons and an idolater towards Brian. But then he says, uh, Newton is not to be trusted. You know, I'd say the same thing about JT. Uh, there's you got Phil Randon, which I've had my dealings with him. Uh, what was the other video? There's there's another comment I wanted to show. I forget where it was. Actually, those are all the comments I wanted to show. Oh yeah, here's a uh, Matthew Lando, uh, which he just goes off about accountable KGV and yeah. But the bottom line is is the reason why I'm showing these comments is just basically because. Uh, and, and there were other comments that were, were really not related, but I just don't really feel the need to, need to include. But the bottom line is that the reason why they're so triggered over this whole thing, the reason why JT's having to do videos on Philip Newton is because they don't like having their sin kicked. They don't like having their heathen customs of men of Christmas being kicked. See, again, they love to point out your sin all day long, but then whenever you point out their wickedness and their sin and call them out on that, they don't like that. And they start calling you lost because you spoke against their God, Brian Dillinger. Okay, so that's the bottom line. So Mark can avoid this cult. Do I think JT is a safe man? I honestly don't know. I'm not going to say yes or no. I just don't know. He is behaving like a lost man, particularly in this video and in the comment section, which is another issue. But yeah, Mark can avoid this Brian Dillinger cult. Uh, Mark can avoid him like the plague. They are they are dangerous. Uh, do I think Brian's a safe man? I, I do think so. But the way he's behaving, he needs some serious chastisement, plain and simple from the Lord. So anyway, don't be deceived and mark and avoid this cult like the plague. It is a Roman Catholic uh, like cult. They behave like Roman Catholics. They behave like Jesuits. Um, in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.